Hi, I'm Carl Gardner and I'm here talking to Tom Bowler, whose debut short story collection, The Method and Other Stories, won the International Scott Prize in 2010 and the Edge Hill Readers Award in 2011. Now an associate lecturer at the University of Plymouth, Tom has just secured a two-book deal with a major publisher, his forthcoming novel, a psychological thriller set on Dartmoor. Tom is also assistant editor for the literary journal Short Fiction. So, hi Tom. Hi Carl. Uh, I have a few questions for you, starting with the story that you won the prize for, um, The Method, which is the first story in the, the book collection. Um, I'm dying to ask, how did you think of the idea, and have you yourself ever taken to putting yourself in a character's shoes? Yes, a good question. The, the idea for The Method uh, came from mainly listening to a, a radio interview with the actor Daniel Day-Lewis, an uh, mm-hmm. Irish actor, famous for his... Um, devotion to his, his art, suffering for his art, if you like, so for research for his roles that he, um, he immerses himself in for months and sometimes years before taking them on. And in, in this, this radio interview, he was talking about, um, actually the radio interview that I, was, was with Barry McGuigan, um, boxer, former um, famous boxer, and he was, um, he, he'd been enlisted by um, Daniel Day-Lewis to um, train him for this film role, I think the film's called The Boxer, and Barry McGuigan was talking about that at the end of the, their training, that, that Daniel Day-Lewis, apart from the top five uh, middleweights in the country, that Daniel Day-Lewis would probably be able to beat <laughs> we would be able to beat any, any other boxer in that way, and I just thought that was an, <laughs> absolutely extraordinary to, to, to go to that length. And the other, the other sort of inspiration, I guess, was um, uh, Christian Bale in the film The Machinist, if you've seen The Machinist, and he, um, he, he loses about, I'm not exactly sure, he, he loses a lot of weight, he loses over a third of his body weight, Christian Bale, for this film, and he was, he was talking as well about his diet for months leading up to um, filming, where he would, he would, he would live off some ridiculous, so sort of, he'd, he'd have a yoghurt for breakfast, an apple for lunch, and some seeds for dinner, you know, this was the extent of it, and this went on for months, and he, um, he if, you, if you've seen that film, he just looks... You know, painfully, know painfully oh. thin in that. So it was, yeah. I mean, the story, the method, the title story is a fairly tongue-in-cheek story, yeah. um, and, but it does, yeah. It, it, it makes the point well of getting in, inside your characters' heads, um, which is, is is really important, really, because you know they need to resonate, they need to come to life, mm-hmm. they need to somehow transcend the story that they find themselves mm-hmm. in. In many ways, in the method, the main character, David, uh, doesn't really seem to have a character of his own, as he's allowing these, this other character to take over his life. Um, and is it fair to say that as a writer, writing takes over your life in the same way? Um, well, I mean, no more so than any other obsession takes over your <laughs> life. Um, yeah, it, it certainly does. Um, during composition, um, especially of, of, of a novel, more than more than short stories. I mean, a short story is, is very intense experience. Hopefully, for the reader, and it and it and it can be, and that tends to be how it's how it evolves and is put together as well. A novel. I mean, you know, you're, you're giving a year of your life, two years of your life, sometimes you know, seven, eight years of your life. Some <laughs> people I hear, you know, um, which is an extraordinary long time. So, yeah, I mean, I, I sort of certainly cocoon myself um, at the expense of. Of, of lots of other things, of social things, of, of family uh, get neglected, and it does. It, it certainly permeates every every aspect of your life. In a sense, you're always writing. You're always working on it, even when you're not. Even when you're, you know, you're you're, you're at the pub. You're walking to the shops. You're you're, you're playing sport. There's just something sort of a default sort of low key sort of Constantly aspect of it. Yeah, because because you because it's sort of a, a creative element, and you know, and the need to to, to, to always um, you know produce produce words to produce something new to to, to you know to extend the narrative, you you always need to draw on things. So you're always working, and it'll often you know it'll wake you at three four o'clock in the morning. Um, your characters. So um, yeah, and I mean once you've spent a year or two with these characters and in the same setting then it, you know it's it is hard to get away from them and so so kind of yeah very obsessive nature to it and in many ways it, 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 it in that way it feels like a it feels like a mental illness i suppose <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um yeah it takes over your life but it, mm-hmm. you know in a good way you know it's, yeah. it's, you know you're, this is something you're choosing you know it's like i don't want to you know kind of try and gender 
you know, much sympathy for this. This is a, a chosen path. Okay, and how do you come up with your ideas? You said the method came from an idea was listening to the radio. Do you generally pick up ideas from just listening to the radio, reading the news, or do you have any other processes for yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a good question. People are always fascinated where writers' ideas come from. Yeah, n- news stories, surprisingly, really, really um, a rich source of, um, of material for me. I, I, I don't tend to start with character. I don't tend to start with plot or setting. Mm. It's usually a, a concept of some sort, um, an idea, but it, it can be a very sort of focused um, piece of news, uh, and often an event. Often an event that, um, and, as, and then you sort of start digging away and, and looking beneath the event and, and um, seeing what is what's the story behind the story. Really, I mean, personal experience as well. You know, stories often. You often draw on your own experience, even mm-hmm. if, even if you know you've not, even if that's not sort of di- a direct experience, you know. So uh, stories can't really evolve in, in a vacuum. So even the most sort of outlandish um, scenes um, and emotions that, for legal and moral reasons, I can't have any direct access to, <laughs> you know, you need to try and sort of evoke them somehow. So it's, and I think. I think this is done because the, the great tragedies, the, the biggest thrills in life, I think they can be um, metaphors for each other. So you don't necessarily have to experience them all. And, and as I said earlier, you, you, know, you, you often can't. But yeah, you can read about these things, you can research, you can interview people, um, you know, how did you feel and such and such. But, you know, say I'm writing about a character who's um, just lost a loved one. Mm-hmm. And, and I can't do, you know, I, I, I can't have direct experience of that. Then I have to draw on something, you know, that, that I think can evoke those sort of feelings. Mm-hmm. Um, because there's only so much you can you can get from from you know just just reading about something. So, yeah. so yeah, I mean, ideas come from you know external sources for the most part. But it's yeah, it's you know, it's it's you're looking within as well. When you develop, mm-hmm. thank you. And can you describe your writing process? Any particular rituals that you mm. perform before writing? Yeah, again, people people f- often interested in how writers work, and I imagine you know there are as many ways as there are writers. Um, it's really crucial to to have a discipline, to be disciplined. You can't only write in the good times. You can't only write when you're motivated when you're inspired if you wait for inspiration to come along you know that that one or two years we're talking about to write a novel will will soon become one or two decades um and and there's a there's a quote isn't there a a writer who talks about he only he only writes when he's inspired and he makes sure he's inspired at nine o'clock every morning um (laughs) so yeah you can't only write during the good times my own my own process then um I, a, a word count, a daily word count, I find is really important um, as, a, as a minimum. You know, and this can be fairly modest. It can be eight hundred words, a thousand words, and you often write more than that. But it's, it's, yeah, that's that's the um, that will be a good a good minimum to have, and but also you know not to beat yourself up to to be able to walk away from the book, uh, <laughs> to leave the book if you feel that you're doing more harm than good. Um, mm-hmm. You know put it in a drawer, um, go for a walk, go for a holiday, to leave it alone. Because in some strange way, the, the book um, sort of continues to work on itself in your absence. Mm. Um, obviously not literally, which would be a nice thing. But, <clears throat> you know, so, yeah, I mean, discipline's all well and good. But, you know, give yourself breaks from time to time. I, I yeah, I mean, some people will get up and work at crack of dawn. They'll get up at four or five o'clock. Um, lots of people that I know, lots of writers work late into night. I, I don't, I, you know, I, I, I won't give myself such a rigid structure mm-hmm. or routine, but I, you know, will have that daily word count. I like to write original stuff in the mornings and I like to edit in the evenings, really. But other than that, other than that, fairly, fairly flexible. Your use of dialogue is very realistic, especially in the short story Seeing Anyone which again is in the method and other stories. It's about a separate couple who meet up once again, and it almost felt like an outsider spying on them. They they sort of referred to things that was implied but you didn't really know about, and uh, I want to know, how do you go about writing your dialogue in such a way? Well, yeah, um, dialogue's really important. Dialogue, um, you need to have a good ear for dialogue, I suppose. So maybe that's, um, uh, I'm not a musician, but maybe it, it relates in some way to 
to the the, um, the, the, the mathematics of, of, of music, but it's it's crucial to have a good ear. Dialogue needs to not only you know sound natural and authentic; it needs to it needs to resonate as well. So it needs to sing. Um, of course, dialogue doesn't mimic in any way uh, act the way people actually speak yeah. um, with all its you know kind of pauses and breaks and <laughs> mutterings and syntax all over the place yeah, yeah um, but it's it, you know it's it needs to work really hard dialogue it needs to work hard but appear not to Di- I mean dialogue is is the best way to reveal character it's in some way it's it's talking about tra- fiction transcending itself um, I mean yeah, dialogue also here it needs to, it, its whole needs to somehow be um, sort of more than the, the sum of its parts. Um, but but having a, having a good ear for dialogue is is crucial. Um, it, it's crucial really. And uh, re- reading your dialogue aloud to yourself will often um, that that will often highlight any any kind of points that don't work. Mm-hmm. Anything that jars. Which authors inspire you? Yeah, which authors inspire me? I don't. Oh, it's. It, it, I have. I have lots of writers I, I really love and respect. I, I, but in some ways, I tend to leave the author behind. Mm-hmm. I mean, I. I don't know that authors per se inspire me. I think fiction inspires yeah. me. Stories inspire me. Um, and so, I mean, I don't know. Writers who take risks. Writers who say things that others mm-hmm. won't. Writers who can convey sort of human truths um, in sort of beautifully wrought poetic language that doesn't compromise the narrative at all. Um, I mean, I I love I loved what Julian Barnes did um, with memory in um, his, his his recent book, um, A Sense of an Ending. Um, if I were to look along my shelves, I would see I'd see an awful lot of Irish writers, sort of both mm-hmm. uh, contemporary and. Um, Past authors, um, uh, Ali Smith. I love Ali Smith. Um, I've just discovered um, Graham Mort. Um, mm-hmm. He's he's a masterful storyteller, um, I, uh, and that's that's fantastic when you discover a, a new author, um, and then you go out and seek out their work. Uh, William Trevor. He, he's a favourite, but I it's 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 more about the fiction for me than than the writing. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, it's almost in a way sort of if you think of sort of the celebrity culture we. we live in today it's, yeah. it's almost the opposite of that really for me and I I don't know if that's the same for, for, for all writers but it's it doesn't if, if, I, if I find a, a fantastic piece of fiction it doesn't make me want to seek out the author or find out more about the author mm-hmm. it, it makes me want to seek out more of their work but in many ways I'm, I'm content for the for the author to be sort of anonymous really sitting in the mm-hmm. background um, I don't really need to don't have this desire to, to know very much about them. Well, so you write about adultery a lot, um, in particular <laughs> in the games they play, which is about a swingers party. Any personal experience there? Um, no comment, Carl. <laughs> um, can you give any advice for those who want to be writers? Well, um, I, well, to read, really. Um, I... <laughs> It was a, he was a chap, there was a chap on the radio, uh, coming back to the radio, um, he's an American, he talked about having to spend 10,000 hours doing something to master it, um, whether that's playing the piano, <laughs> um, brain surgery, um, that's, that's a long time, but I think as, as, as writers you can, you know, a lot of that, you can, uh, you can tick off a lot of that time by reading, um, I think, you know, reading is... Is crucial uh, to to that process of becoming a writer. So, so to read everything, anything, but mostly stuff that excites you, that that you know, that, that you, you you relish. I mean, life's too short to, to wade through the classics if they're not <laughs> not if they're not for you. But 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 still take the time to go and find out if they're not for you. Um, mm-hmm. I'd say and um, read and read everything as a writer. Um, read uh, see what the author's doing. See what they're what they're trying to achieve, how they set up a story. Uh, I'd say, well, I mean, be patient. This is a long game. Be in it for, mm-hmm. the, be in it for the long haul. The things, you know, <laughs> things aren't going to happen overnight. So le- learn, to, um, learn to love rejection. That would be something. <laughs> <laughs> Not learn to love it, but... but um, Accept it. Re- well, yeah, rejection's going to be a very, very familiar friend. It's going, it's going to be around a lot, so, so you know, you might as well make it a, mm. a, a good bedfellow. Um, 
to, to take risks, really. Um, yeah. to, to, you know, you, you want to be original. Um, so, you know, you're going to need to take some risks somewhere down the line. But I, my best bit of advice, really, would be just to, to, to get lucky. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, and you're writing a novel at the moment. You've a two book deal. Are these two books in series, or are they two separate separate books? Yeah, no, they they'll, they'll be they'll be completely unrelated. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, the, the, the I work in progress. Um, okay. I've I've learned not to talk about the book that you're oh, writing so okay. this could maybe link back to your previous question of advice for writers mm -hmm. if you, I find if you talk about your work in progress uh, as in you know mm. if it's plot it's it's you know it's voice where it's going um, the characters within it you, you then go back home and you lose some of the um, the desire of, of storytelling that actual process so I mean mm -hmm. one of the great thrills in a, of, of writing a book is, is the you know the actual essence of storytelling um, so you you are you, you, something gets diluted if you so and I have to you know I've spent, <laughs> people that will listen um, you know in, in a pub I've spent hours telling them about my work in progress and you know that's you need to be able to talk about your book um, but mm -hmm. I would say just be a bit more guarded because you you know you do lose something you go home and then you so something is lost that that thrill and excitement of of telling it mm -hmm. for the first time so I think when you tell your book for the first time it should be. When you, when and as you write mm -hmm. it, and to your to, to yourself, really, that's not really that's not to sound overly um, arcane and, and, and mystical. <laughs> I can tell you a little bit about the first book, um, which is done and dusted now, um, okay. and that's as you said, it's a, a psychological thriller um, set mostly on Dartmoor, and it's a, it's about a woman who uh, she tries to escape her past. She moves down to Dharma mm -hmm. and makes a new life for herself and, and starts a family just for that past really to um, to catch up with her with um, terrible consequences mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a book about guilt and identity and um, uh, the things that love can endure really do we have a release date for the book yet? yes we do, it's, um, it's out in January um, 2013 will be available in all good bookshops then. <laughs> okay, and you started writing the second one. Yes, yes, the um, yeah, straight on with the next one, okay. and so, some similar themes going mm -hmm. on there. I, my 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 characters tend to be haunted by things in their past, okay. I think, and, and this book's uh, certainly no exception. Okay. It's also a psychological thriller, then. Right? Well, I, I I leave those sort of genre descriptions to, to my yeah. publisher really and, and yeah I mean it, things are still up for grabs I suppose at this stage it, 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 yeah, it has elements of the psychological thriller to it mm -hmm. certainly yeah well thank you for talking to us uh, I'm Carl Gardner and I've been interviewing Tom Bowler